Hey everyone, Victor is here and today I want to talk about the epoxidation of alkenes. Epoxide is a very useful functional group from the synthetic standpoint and epoxidation is a very common reaction that I see on the tests all the time. And while it's a fairly straightforward reaction, it has a few tricky features one of which being its mechanism and the curved arrows within that mechanism. So grab your cup of coffee, a notebook to work through the examples with me, hit that like button for good luck on the test and let's get started. As usual, we're going to start with the mechanism of this reaction. So let's say I have a generic alkene here and to do the epoxidation reaction, we are going to treat this alkene with a peroxy acid. Now, to make it easier to show the mechanism, I'm actually going to redraw my peroxy acid like this. And there are a few versions of this mechanism. I like the one with four arrows the most, it seems to be the most straightforward one. You might also see the one with five arrows, which is pretty much the same thing. So arrow number one is going to be the carbonyl grabbing a proton, then we are going to attack one of the carbons of our alkene. These electrons will be used to make the first CO bond. Next the pi electrons of the alkene float back to the peroxy acid that will make the second CO bond. And finally, we are going to break OO bond. Oh, and since it's a concerted mechanism, all of that happens at once. And I know it's a lot to take in right now, so let's do it step by step one more time. I'll start it from the clean slate. Step one is going to be carbonyl grabbing uh, the proton and that makes our new OH bond right off over here. Step two, we are going to attack one of the carbons of the alkene and that makes a new CO bond over here. Step three, alkene attacks the oxygen and that makes the second CO bond there. And then finally, step four is going to be breaking the OO bond, which gives us our final products, epoxide and carboxylic acid. And of course, the only product that we actually do care about is the epoxide and we are going to discard the carboxylic acid. So when it comes to the peroxy acids, we have the three most commonly used ones. It's going to be MCPBA, which stands for the metachloroperbenzoic acid, which is probably the most commonly used one. Next, we have the peroxyacetic acid. Lots of people like to use it, but to me personally, this compound smell gives me the same physiological reaction as when somebody, I don't know, scratches the blackboard surface with their fingernails. I just, I can't even think about this one. It just gives me goosebumps, so let's move on. So the last commonly used peroxy acid we are going to see is going to be MMPP, which stands for magnesium monoperoxyphthalate. Each of those peroxy acids have their drawbacks and benefits. For our purposes, they are essentially interchangeable. So you can use whichever you like most. And you'll likely see the MCPBA being the most commonly used one, so you'll probably see that most of the time in your course. All right, let's check out some examples here. The first example, our good old friend 1,2-dimethylcyclohexene, and we are going to turn this double bond into an epoxide. Since like in the case with the cyclopropanation, I can have my oxygen of the epoxide end up on one side of the molecule or the other side, I'm going to have to push the methyl groups here in the opposing direction. So I ended up with this molecule, which by the way is a mesa compound due to the internal plane of symmetry, meaning that this molecule is achiral. Now in the next example, I'm going to work with this double bond over here. And like in the previous case, I'm going to turn this into an epoxide looking like that. This is a chiral molecule with this carbon over here being chiral carbon. So I'll have to show some proper stereochemistry with the dashes and wedges like so. And that gives me a pair of enantiomers. Now, finally, for my last example, I'm going to convert this double bond into an epoxide, giving me one molecule with the oxygen of the epoxide looking away from me and another one looking at me. And of course, this gives me a pair of diastereomers. So to recap what we have just learned, the epoxidation converts alkenes into the corresponding epoxides. This reaction is stereospecific and you can classify that as a syn addition. 
Thus, this theory configuration of their regional double bond does matter a lot. And in fact, if I react, say, a um, cis alkene like this, I'll get one product, a mesa compound in this case. But if I were to react a trans alkene like this trans bean, for instance, I'm going to end up with a pair of enantiomers. And finally, we have three commonly used peroxy acids. We have MCPBA, MMPP and that other one which I don't even want to talk about. And that's all you need to know about the epoxidation reactions to ace the next test. Thank you for watching. I want to give a special thanks to all organic chemistry tutor members and my donors that keep this project going. This truly would not be possible without your help and encouragement. If you learned something new today, please give this video a like, subscribe and leave a comment below. This way YouTube will show this video to more people. In the meantime, check out this video and I will see you tomorrow.